Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about an advanced ALG set called 2E2E. 2E2E is short for two edge, two edge swap. An example of that is something like this. We can see that UB and UL need to be swapped with each other, and DF and DB also need to be swapped with each other. In other words, two edges need to be swapped with each other, and another two need to be swapped with each other. And that's why it's called a two edge, two edge swap. We can solve this with one ALG. That's basically what 2E2E is. It's a 22 ALG subset that swaps two edges and another two edges. So why is this useful? Well, it's helpful for solving parity and multi-blind. I use 2E2E for multi-blind and so do other good people like Mark and Graham. Let's say we have this gram of multi-blind. For edges, this is our buffer and it needs to go here, so there's one edge target. For corners, this is our buffer and it needs to go here, so that's one corner target. Now since we have an odd number of targets for edges and corners, we have parity. Now the standard way that most people deal with multiplying parity is solve the last edge target with M2, do the M2 parity alg, and then solve the corner with old Pockman. However, 2E2E combines the first two steps. Instead of solving the last target with M2 and then doing the M2 parity alg, we can just do one 2E2E alg, and then solve the corner with old Pockman. So why did that work? Well, to understand that, we need to see what the M2 parity alg actually does. So after solving the last edge target with M2, what the M2 parity alg does is restore the M slice, and more importantly, swap UB and UL. Now the reason we want UB and UL to be swapped is because after we do the last corner with old Pockman, it's going to swap them right back. Like that. The reason we can do this in one step is because the 2E2E alg swaps DF and DR, which solves the last edge, and also swaps UB and UL, which sets us up to do the first corner with old Pockman. So here we have the 2E2E alg. As you can see, the last edge was solved, and UB and UL are now swapped. Now for the corner. If this is a bit confusing, that's okay. I have an example solved later in this video. Since my buffers are DF and UBL, I learned a subset to swap UB with UBL and DF with any other sticker. Like I said earlier, this subset is a total of 22 ALGs. However, it's not 22 new ALGs because a lot of them are just setups to other cases. For example, the 2E2E that swaps UB and UBL and DF and DL is this ALG that was genned. And then the 2E2E for BL is just a setup into the case I just showed you. I have a comprehensive doc with all 22 algs and notes about them, so be sure to check that out. If you use different buffers, you'd want to learn a different subset. Like if you use UF UBL, you'd want to learn a subset that swaps UB with UL and UF with any other sticker. An example of a 2E2E like that is this. As you can see, UB needs to be swapped with UL, and UF needs to be swapped with UR. You're probably familiar with this one, as it's just a Z perm. A really important trick you should know when using this method is intelligent cycle breaking. Angelo Zhang, the three blind world record holder, says that one of the reasons 2E2E is so good is because of intelligent cycle breaking. So what is this trick? Well first, we have to understand that some 2E2Es are faster than others. For example, the 2E2E for BD is really fast, while the 2E2E for LF is not as fast. However, we can force better 2E2Es by cycle breaking intelligently. The key idea is, if we cycle break through a piece, we will also come back to that piece. If that's your last target and there's parity, you will be doing the 2E2E out for that sticker. For example, if you break to FR, you know that you have to come back to either FR or RF later in the solve. Oftentimes, there are multiple cycle breaks, so you can't guarantee that either one will be a last edge target. However, you can almost always force the last one to be a fast 2E2E. In this case, we have parity, and our edge buffer is solved. Now, I like the 2E2E for BD, so I'm going to break there. That takes me to FR, and then FL, UR, and then back to BD. So as you can see, I cycle broke to BD, and I also ended on BD, which is a good 2E2E. To maximize your chances of getting a good 2E2E, you should rank all your 2E2Es in terms of speed, and then when you get a cycle break, go down the list and try to break at the first available sticker. There's a nice way to memorize the dangling edge and corner. What you can do is combine the last edge and the first corner. So if your edge memo was RFA and your corner memo was NFE, 
you would group RF into one pair, and then combine A from edges with N from corners, and then pair up F and E. As you'll see in the example solve, combining the last edge in the first corner makes sense because you'll also execute in that order. Let's take a look at this scramble. Now, I'm going to do this in my letter scheme, but I will put the entire example solve in the description so you can look at that if you're having trouble following along. Anyway, my first edge is E, which goes to K. Now here I have a cycle break, so I'm going to break to BD, which is my first choice sticker. BD is S, which goes to N, G, T, W. Now here I'm back at DB, which means I'll have to break again. My next choice sticker that hasn't been targeted yet is FR, so I'm going to go there. L, V, F, M, D, and finally I'm back at L. Now I've solved all the edges, which means L is my last target, so I'm going to have to do 2E, 2E for that, which is good because I like it. My first corner target is T. And since I combine my last edge with the first corner, I'm going to combine L and T. To make sure I don't confuse LT with the rest of my memo, I like to imagine that image surrounded by light. So in this case, I'll visualize a lieutenant appearing in a blinding light. Continuing on for corners, I have U, and I'm going to break to R, C, R, and then break to D, L, S, E. Now for execution, and I'm going to solve these with three style. E, K, S, N, G, T, W, L, V, F, M, D. And here I'm at my last edge, L, and the 2E, 2E for that is just R prime into this alg. Remember how we combined the last edge in the first corner into one image, which was LT? Well, that made sense because I just executed L with a 2E, 2E, and now I'm going to do T with old Pachman. So there was no delay between L and T. T. Now to finish corners, UR, CR, DL, SE. If you memorize and execute corner edge, corner edge, you can still use 2E, 2E, except you would execute the last corner with old Pachman and then the first edge with 2E, 2E. I've talked about using 2E, 2E for parity and multi-blind, but what about using it for 3-blind? Well, it's not the best method. It's certainly better than the M2 parity alg, but it's not as fast as the UB, UL swap. If you're curious as to why it's not as good, I have an explanation typed up on the doc. The only time 2E, 2E is useful in 3-blind is for something like this. There's no parity, but UB and UL are swapped. So what we can do is, after the first com, instead of breaking into a new cycle and then doing another com, we can just do 1, 2E, 2E. Similarly, we might have parity, but UB and UL are not swapped. So after the first edge com, instead of breaking into a new cycle, we can just do the 2E, 2E, and then solve corners. I want to end by saying a huge thanks to Angelo Zhang. Angelo told me about this method and about how to cycle break intelligently. He also genned a lot of the algs. 2E, 2E definitely wouldn't be this good without Angelo's help, so again, huge thanks to him. That's it for 2E, 2E. Leave your comments and questions below, and I will be sure to see them. Thanks for watching!